we are going to kick this off. First, we are going to create our Spring Boot application. To do that, I'm going to go to start.spring.io. So here, I'm going to be using Java, Maven, the latest stable Spring Boot version. And for my group, I'm just going to call this Figon Dev. And the name of the project is going to be Figon. Let's call it Figon e-commerce. And my Java is going to be 21. And my package is in Java. I'm going to be adding my dependency over here. So here I'm going to be making use of my Spring Web, my Lombok for getting data and setters. I'm going to be using my SQL here. If you are using Postgres, you can also use Postgres as well. I'm going to be using my JPA. I'm going to be using Spring Security, Spring Security, and then let's just have some validation, which is going to be this, and everything looks fine. So I'm going to click on this to generate. So this has been generated. So go over here, go to my download where it was downloaded. Just click on it to extract. I'm going to open this up in my IntelliJ. So over here, I'm going to open. I'm going to, this is it. I'm going to open it up. And in the meantime, it's going to try to develop to get all the dependencies that are necessary. As that is going on, I'm going to be adding some extra dependency. Since we are going to be making use of AWS S3, I'm going to add that dependency. And I'm also going to be adding a dependency for our JSON Web Token dependency. So before then, let me just quickly check if it's okay. It's downloading here. So over here, I'm just going to here and just search for AWS S3. Dependency. So it's going to click over on this. And I'm going to make use of the latest table version, Java SDK for Amazon S3 which is in Julia, that's a stable version for now. So let's just make use of that. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go to my home.sml. I'm going to move that. I'm going to paste it here. So in the same way, I'm going to be making use of our JC Web Token. So go over again to your Google and just type for GWT Maven dependency and it's going to go this way. In the same way, we are going to go to the Maven repository, click on that, and it's going to tell us that okay, this has been moved. Okay, click on this JSON Web Token here, and we are back to this. So you can decide to use this transitive dependency. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be making use of the implementation, the API, and the Jackson. This is the recommended way. So I'm going to click each of them on a new page so I can easily access them. So this is our Jackson. Click on the latest version. I'm going to copy this Come over here. Is that here? And just do that again. So for the JWT implementation, I'm going to also do the same thing. So come over here, copy that. And then for the API, I'm going to also do the same thing.
yeah so this looks a bit good i have my jwt dependency which are going to be used in generating token i have my aws here we are going to be using to store to the cloud and every other of my dependency is here so i'm going to click on this to refresh So if peradventure you didn't see any icon for you to reload your project, you can click over here at the right, click where you're moving, and you will see so this icon over here to refresh. So when you click on it, it's going to re-download your dependency for you. Okay, so that seems to have been downloaded. So let's run our application to see how it works. So what we are going to do next is we are going to connect our application to our database. So over here in application the property, let me write my database connectivity. So here we are going to first of all give it our server. Let's just run it on port 2424. It's going to say server.port, which is 2424. I'm not going to say spring. Data source.url is going to be the URL to our database. It's going to be JVDC MySQL. Our, since our database is going on our local machine, so it is going to be the absolute part which our local host, our port. Then the name of our database. For me, I'm just going to call it e-commerce. But now it has not been created, we are going to create it. So also let us also have our username. As it did the username for connecting to our database is going to be for me, my username is root, and so let us also have our password as well. So this is going to be password. For me, my password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then let's just say ring.jpa.hibernate.ddl auto. Is going to be update whenever we have an update in our entity whenever we have a change on our entity we want our database to be updated so that it changes so that's what this is doing so so let's just give it our driver name and this is going to be com dot sql dot cj dot jdpc dot dot driver so this looks good so let me go to my database and create this database called e-commerce so here go to my workbench i'm going to create database i'm going to give it a name Alternatively, you can also come over here, click on this icon here to also create a database here. You can pass in your database name, so it's also the same thing. From this, we can see our database was successfully created. If I refresh this, we can see e-commerce here was created for us. So let me just run this to make sure that everything is um, seems to working fine. Okay, it seems to be moving fine. We can see over here our username has been changed and a password has been generated for us because we are using Spring Security. 
So yeah, so that looks fine. So we are going to come over here and write packages for our application so we can structure our application. So here, I'm just going to bring this down. I'm going to have my packages. So here, I'm just going to have my controller package. I'm going to have my PTO. I'm going to have my enums. I'm going to have my exception. I'm going to have my mapper. I'm going to have my repository. I'm going to have my security. I'm going to have my service. And I'm going to have my specification. But now let's not worry about all these things. I'm going to explain them as we start writing implementation on each of the package.